Ancient Arabic sources indicate that there were at least three Muslim voyages from Muslim Andalusia to the New World. Abdul Hassan Ali ibn al Hussein ibn Ali al Masudi, who lived from 871 to 957, writing in the meadows of gold and quarries of jewels, wrote about the voyage of Kashkash ibn Sa'id ibn Aswad in the year 889, over six centuries before Columbus. According to the account, Ibn Aswad sailed west with a Muslim crew from Delba, the same port from which Columbus would later sail some six centuries later. He found a new world and returned with wealth and booty from across the Atlantic. Approximately one century later, Abu Bakr ibn Umar al Qatiyah reported that Ibn Farouk, in the year 999, sailed west across the Atlantic, landing in the Canary Islands in February of that year, and then continuing west until discovering two islands, presumably in the Caribbean, which he named Capraria and Pluitana. He returned to Spain in May of 999. And Al-Adrisi, the famous Muslim cartographer and advisor to the king of Sicily, wrote in his excursions of the longing ones in crossing horizons about a group of eight Muslim sailors who sailed west from what is today Lisbon, Portugal, sailing west across the Atlantic, and they sailed for 31 days before they landed on an unknown island and were captured and held prisoner by American Indians for three days. On the fourth day, stop and think about this now, on the fourth day, a translator arrived who spoke Arabic and arranged for their release. Obviously, there had been a great deal of sustained contact, quite possibly from Muslim West Africa at that point for an American Indian to have become fluent enough in Arabic to be have been able to serve as translator. Anyway, he arranged for their release and they returned safely to Andalusia. But it wasn't just from Muslim Andalusia. Sheikh Zain Abdin Ali ibn Fadl al-Mazandarani sailed west from Tarfea, Morocco in the year 1291 and landed on a green island, again presumably in the Caribbean, and returned safely to Morocco. But perhaps the most impressive of all the Muslim voyages to the New World, which we can today document, concerned the Mandinka of West Africa. A new empire soon grew up along the Niger River. A young prince of the Mandinka people, related to the Saninka, took control of the former capital of Ghana in 1235 and established the empire of Mali. Mali became rich, powerful, and the envy of other African nations. Mali's territory expanded north and west of the Atlantic Ocean. The people of Mali accepted Islam. This shared religion gave Mali closer ties to the Muslim cities of North Africa. And as Mali expanded its empire, it helped spread Islam. Writing in the pathways of sites in the provinces of kingdoms, Shihab ad-Din al-Umari recounted a conversation that he had with the famed Mansa Musa, who was traveling through Egypt in his famous Hajj pilgrimage. Mansa Musa set out for Mecca but he didn't make the journey as a humble pilgrim. Mansa Musa turned it into a royal occasion. It's said that Mansa Musa and his followers spent and gave away gold so generously that they upset many of the local economies they passed through. Mansa Musa used his wealth to spread the religion of Islam. He brought Egyptian artists to Mali to build fabulous mosques. He also brought Muslim scholars to teach the basic beliefs of Islam. Mali standing in the world soared, and even more trade and wealth came to its market cities. 
Mansa Musa had transformed Mali's wealth into lasting monuments and a commodity even more valuable than gold, knowledge. And according to Mansa Musa, a few years before his older brother, Abu Bakari, who was then the ruler of the Mandinka Kingdom of Mali, had sent two expeditions west across the Atlantic, two fleets. This would be around the year 1310. If we put the two Mandinka expeditions together, we have a combined total of 2,400 ships. A massive movement from the Mandinka of West Africa. And we know they reached America. We know that because of the linguistic evidence, if for no other reasons. There is today in South America an American Indian tribe that uses Mandinka ideograms as its form of written communication. And there is in North America an American Indian tribe located in the middle of the Atlantic seaboard who, which back around the mid 18th century, a Moravian missionary went and studied with them and wrote a dictionary of their language. Modern linguists looking at that dictionary have discovered that many, many, many of those words are in fact Mande, the language of the Mandinka Indians. There is another, perhaps even older, news report in progress involving a distinctive but long forgotten alphabet used on the Arabian Peninsula and found at Block Rock and elsewhere along the Purgatoire River in southeastern Colorado. Ali has been documenting rock carvings in Dofar for many years. He spoke enthusiastically about the matching rock art symbols he saw in southeastern Colorado in 2001 when he returned to the state four years later. And I did a lecture there and I met uh, Philip Leonard and he took me for about 14 days on his course and his money and he did everything for me. So we went to Colorado and we saw these inscriptions and I was astonished. I mean, I, you know, I was it was amazing. It was uh, not unbelievable that you find these inscriptions exactly the same as ours, the same characters, the way that they have written it, and the same way that our people and the people here have done it. You were astonished by this? Absolutely. I mean, how can I believe that, you know, uh, hand, uh, thousands of kilometers away from our area that the same people or the same characters being found in here? A set of 33 characters corresponding to the sounds in the Shari language is a near-perfect match. 28 of the sounds correspond to 28 common characters with the Thamudic alphabet. And four of the five distinctively Dofari characters are nowhere else to be found outside of Dofar but on the rocks of southeastern Colorado. We believe those five characters represent the additional five sounds in their language. And four of those additional characters are perfect matches to four extra characters we find here. The implications of these finds are mind-boggling. By seeing those characters, those inscriptions, the Colorado ones, and see my, ours, you never think that, I mean, these are different. Here's yet another tantalizing link. Notice how this Colorado rock engraving of an ocean-going vessel in use more than a millennium ago compares to the rock art of an ancient ship with the same distinctive rigging and hull in Dofar, halfway around the globe. And at least one Central American Indian tribe has clan names that correspond exactly to clan names of the Mandinka. tribes and they only found seven 
And since then we found two in the last hundred years. But we never found the tenth one. And then we think it's a Lakota nation. Only tribe in the USA that got that got a you know, a gift from God. And so the Muslim nations yeah. believe the Lakotas are, are one of their of them, yeah, one of their bands. Pretty interesting. Mm -hmm.